Amen. So the second service is very short. So in the first service, the Lord helped us. And we looked about, we looked into valuing relationships. Though we did not finish, but I promised you that um, we're going to be talking about friendship in the second service. So let me quickly, in five minutes, run down the remaining keys to building a healthy relationship. Remember I said the first one is starting with yourself. Matthew chapter 22 verse 39. Number two, being faithful. Being faithful. If you want to be fruitful, you have to be faithful to people. If you, have, if you want to have a wonderful relationship with people, then you have to be faithful to them. Number three, speak only encouraging words. Speak only encouraging words. God wants to help you. He wants you to rebuild relationships. He really wants to help you. Because God can only help you. You see, God will not come down on earth. Even when God sent down the angels, he still took a man who knows how to take care of people to recognize that these people are God's sin. If you don't know how to take care of people, how would you even learn how to take care of God? Jesus, the scripture says that, you see, listen carefully, if you cannot relate to things you can see, how then can you relate to things you cannot see? God really wants to help you. It will make you at peace with your enemy. Because God loves a man, right? If you will, if you, the will of a man pleases God, he will make you at peace. Or he will make his enemies at peace with him. Be friendly. If you always harsh and harsh and harsh and there's a place for tough love. But you must be friendly in every relationship happening. Help people in trouble. And pray for one another. Forgive one another. Learn how to deal with offenses. It's very important. I go my way. You go your way. That's not how to manage relationships. I think that's one of the reasons we have a high rate of divorce in relationships. People don't know how to deal with offenses anymore. People even go to the extent of saying that some things are irreconcilable disputes. I don't know where I've seen that in my Bible, but So, give me the book of First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. Help me with this. First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved and Jonathan Loved him as his own soul. Next one. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Please help me and let me understand. Then David and Jonathan made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took up the robe that was on him and gave it to David. With his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. So what happened is that David trusted Jonathan. Jonathan trusted David to the extent that he could lose his guard around David. Remember, Jonathan was also a man of war. Do you know that? So for him to lose his guard around somebody who is a prince, you know, they don't do that. You don't break that kind of protocol. Security breaches are, are non-negotiable when it comes to royalty. For him to do that, he loved this guy that he was ready to break what? He was break protocol and lose his guard. That is trust. So we're talking about friendship. 
Just so the next 25 minutes, Lord, will help us understand what friendship is. And some of people that have been telling you they are your friend, this is how to know. And you that you are saying you are a friend to this person, let us see from the context of the scripture if we are really friends. Characteristics of a true friend. But let me start by telling you that friends are people that face the same direction towards common goals and projects. And when you look at the, the story of Jonathan and David, this is the best, one of the best pictures. Let me tell you why. You know, Jonathan was aware that David had been anointed king. And yet he was happy for his friend. You know what that means? Come on. Becoming a lead singer in the church, people stop talking. <laughs> Talk more of having better customers. To the extent that you know that you are meant to be the heir to the throne. By the way, Jonathan should be the heir to the throne because Saul was the first. But he knew that David was the anointed one. And he was happy for him through friendship. All this, ah, I'm happy for you. It's not true. I wish it was me. That's what they say. I saw a post sometime, and it's good I share it with you. You see all those little things that you see your friends celebrating, and maturity, over maturity, senior man maturity, will not allow you to type. Congratulations. Someone said that you have enrolled into year one of witchcraft. Witchcraft. Simple congratulations. I'm happy for you. But when you say it, you mean it anyway. Number one, a true friend is generous. A true friend is what? Genuine friendship does not look for what it gets in return. So he, the friend is eager to give. In this nation, we interpret giving to mean to, to just mean money. There are a lot of things you give. You give time, you give attention, and you give a lot of other things. Be ready to give out more than you are ready to receive. David, Jonathan, made David reaffirm his vow of friendship again. And for Jonathan, loved David as he loved the friend. So you see, he brought out what he had and gave to David. Because at that time, David probably couldn't have afforded those things. Sometimes people take your Generosity for foolishness. So you see somebody who is maybe from a well-to-do family and is always giving you. And you and something inside of you and a very strong, stupid, and wicked village spirit gets inside of you. And you start thinking that you are eating that guy. Whereas that guy was the most genuine person you would ever meet. And something tells you that this person is a maga. They have come for you from your village. Because you will never get a lot of genuine people on earth to see one hold on to him. This has nothing to do with dating. I'm talking about just friendship. So always willing to give you what he has without asking anything in return. There are a few of us remaining. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Friendship gives without expecting anything in return. Listen clearly. A friend gives without expectation and receives without obligation. That is the other part of it. 
receives without what? Obligation. Don't feel entitled to things because you're a friend to that person. Once he's driving a car and he has the money, he should buy me a car. After all, we are friends. Why are we even friends? You see? That is, that, I, don't know, I don't know how people think like this, but there are people who think like this. And perhaps even under this roof. But the Lord will re- give you sense. You are not entitled to anything, but if you receive, receive with gratitude and thankfulness. You know, something my dad used to say in Igbo then. Someone will give you something, said, ah, you should have not given it to me now. Oh, now you are realizing that you should have given it to me. Now, now, just now. Ah, look at this guy here. Who opened your eyes? GFO. Anyways, I'll accept it. No problem. God, is, God will help you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. True friends are willing to invest time, talent, and treasure in their f- friendship. If someone is your friend, you should be ready to give out that time, that talent, that treasure. Because that relationship or that friendship is so important to you. Number two, most importantly, a friend is trustworthy. Anybody you cannot trust is not your friend. Anybody you cannot trust with your life or with specific things, important things about you, is not your friend. Please differentiate between acquaintances, colleagues, and friends. Are you listening to me? That someone works in the same office that I work in does not mean he's my friend. Someone can be an acquaintance, but he's not a friend. In friendship, there is what we call a connection of spirit. Friendship is way deeper than what we think. Our spirits have to marry. We have to come together. When I'm talking about marry, I'm not talking about going to the altar, please. But our spirit has to come in agreement. Anybody your spirit does not agree with is not qualified to be your friend. You see, those people that every day there's something fighting you about, about them, there is something, there's a disagreement. Find out something. Let me tell you, your spirit knows what the spirit knows, but you don't know it. Huh? Are you listening to me? You know, the way I am now, if people gossip about me and they come close to me, I might not know, exactly know what they gossiped about, but there's something telling me. If it is not telling me, I'm uncomfortable. There's something my spirit knows, they sit at the back or they think in their hearts that I don't know. So I just I ask them God to expose those things. Friendship is done in the spirit. So anybody you are not at rest with is not your friend. Are you listening to me? You know, every activity you do as a human being, your spirit act is there. So if you find no peace with people, don't call such people your friends. They can walk in the same place with you. They can be acquaintances. They can be the people, you know, but please don't call them your friends. Now, Listen carefully. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13. A gossip goes around revealing a secret, but a trust, but a trust what it keeps a confidence. Your friend should not be the one telling people about your weaknesses. Anybody who does that is not your friend. You see, I will keep telling you. The way he kept quiet, or she kept quiet, and did not counter, and did not rebuke, there's something wrong there. Yes, you come to me. Yet Pastor Joshua is telling me something bad about Pastor Amy. And I'm his friend. Ah, if I'm your friend, I should defend you there. If I keep silent, it means I kind of agree with him. 
And most times when they come, they will try to tell you that this person just gossiped about you. If people are comfortable to hear people slander your name at the back, they are probably very comfortable also slandering your name if you don't know that. Are you listening to me? Friendship is not just something that you just say, eh. The disciples, after a while, became friends of Jesus. Friends are people you dare to be yourself. So, because you trust them, you become yourself in front of them. There's no hiding. They know you. You're open to them. That's why people take it for granted. When people are open to you, please don't joke with it. If people are honest with you, don't joke with it. If people don't hide their weaknesses from you, they trust you. Keep it with trust. There are secrets that should go with you to your grave. It is not a sin. It's a mark of integrity. Are you listening to me? When you are angry with people, be careful. Before you go into grave danger, you are angry. And then you start, he was in on the other day, self. And you now say something that he told you in confidence or she told you in confidence. Be careful. No matter how bitter you are about somebody, whatever somebody told you in secret should remain with you, whether you're no longer talking with that person, is a test of your integrity. Keep it for him. So I might not be talking to you after five years, but I should keep your secret. Are you listening to me? Your soul can be naked. They ask, they ask you to put on love only but what you are. So you see, if someone is your friend and every day you are not real, you are always acting up, that person is not your friend. If people are your friend, don't need to act. You see, when you want to know people's friends, you see all those glamorous people, when they come to the room, they remove their wig, put hand like this, and throw a bag, put it down. There are no shame in that. You see the way your pastor is. You see, if you see me play with this guy at home, you would not know his pastor. You see, that's the point. Because he has become a friend, I share things with him I don't share with anybody. But the time comes, so he knows that there's a time he has to step back. If not, something will, will hit him. But it's a grave responsibility. You don't form. Someone is your friend, but they're always forming. That person is not your friend. You don't form for someone who is your friend. You are real with that person. The only friend will meet you for early five, five, five o'clock. I go day. Okay, no, I did. I did as I did. I see no ideas I did. Only a friend will be able to vouch for you. Because he trusts you. There are certain things you tell me about people, I will say no. Because I trust this person. I know this person. If it's otherwise, I will remain there till he uses his mouth to tell me. That's why, you know, sometimes you ask, why are people defending? It's, not, it's because the person they know cannot do this thing. That's why sometimes you're shocked. Oh, see, this person is different. The person they know cannot do this. And when they close the room, they say, come, come, tell me the truth. The person says, I did not. Take it anywhere. They will say that person did not do it. Because his word is his bond. And over time, they've trusted each other to understand that, yes, it's true. If he says yes, it's yes. If he says no, it's no. You know, one of the things I've been very careful to use is calling people friends. Very careful. They are not talk to. There are very few people I've called friends, and I open my mouth to call you a friend. It's very few, because I understood that word from it. And that person, there's a love. You you love the people who will stick closer to you than brothers.
But your brothers are your friends too. You know, if you have a brother who is a sibling, but they are also your friends. Ah, wonderful gift. Let me tell you this. An enemy is better than a two-faced friend. You're better off with an enemy. At least you know that you should be on the defense than somebody who said he's your friend but he's two-faced. You don't even know when to sleep because maybe when you're sleeping. But if he's an enemy, you'll be, you, when you're sleeping, you're sleeping with fear. Most of the coups, most of the things that has done always has an inside man. That's why I keep on saying, be careful before you say somebody is your friend. What has your spirit spoken about that person? Listen carefully. Before someone is your friend, inquire from your spirit. Inquire from your spirit. Do what? Anybody here who your spirit does not tell you, you don't understand the language of your spirit. You're in grave danger of being betrayed. Now let me tell you very something very important about this. A true friend will listen to you when you speak. He wants to understand how you feel and what concerns you. He will keep confidence. His concern is you. His desire is to help you to be who God wants you to be. He has your best interest at heart. Listen, you know, when you have, hey, if you are someone's friend and something bad happens, how you know your friends? Are those ones that want to hear your own side of the story normally? Forget about what I've heard before. Come and talk to me first. People are saying, this thing you are doing is not right. They will ask you, wait. What prompted this decision? Because I know you. I can understand this thing. That's why your parents should be your friend. So that when things happen and there are certain decisions you are taking, they need to listen to you and understand how you feel. Understand why you are taking such decisions. friends. They don't join the crowd to just bark and shout and do all those things. They wait to listen. Because their ultimate concern is not about keeping structure, but their ultimate concern is you. People can be carried away by keeping principles and forget about that the interest should be that person. Let me explain this clearly. If this is what I finish, you can go home. I have three others. God helping us. Next Sunday we start. You meet people. There are people who have taken some decisions that we've called controversial. Have you ever been involved in such situation where someone you are close to takes a controversial decision, makes a controversial decision? It is your job as a friend to understand and know what is best for him. Not what is best for the system. Listen clearly. Let me tell you. It's better someone leaves a system. But it's fine. When I'm talking about the system, I'm not talking about leaving the faith. Because leaving the faith is not best for that person anyways. But you are trying to protect system and you leave somebody. You lose The, the person loses his peace loses his sanity because he wants to protect the system. I'd rather have a friend who is not in the same system like I am, but is perfectly fine somewhere with God than being forced into a system and destroying that person. Are you listening to me? I'm not talking about faith or your Christian faith here. 
So let's come to church. Let me explain this. So, in church we have what we call doctrines. You can have disagreements with doctrines as long as they are not the, against the doctrines of Christ. I would rather that person leaves this system. Is inside still the faith. That I will force the person to be with me in this system. Loses his peace, loses his faith, is in hypocrisy, in high service, and everything destroying himself. Machiating everything. We have lost a lot of people trying to force systems on people that we just need to understand. Hey. God wants to know how you feel about things. That's why the Holy Spirit is our friend. He calls you by your name. He knows what you feel. And he wants to take care of that. Don't be a wicked friend who just wants to protect name above relationship. People have lost their children. Sometimes because you're a bishop. Because you're an archbishop. Because you're a pastor. And you deal rash with children that you should have listened to, take care of them. Over time, don't worry, these children will they'll be fine. And then, you want, why you will regret it tomorrow is a time will come, every other person will leave you. The persons who are meant to be around you has already left you too because you chose the system ahead of them. It comes in a, in a life of every man that everybody will go from true friends will be the one that will stay. They can be your family members or anything. I'm not talking about your faith in Christ, please. Anybody who is outside his faith in Christ is not even in the system at all. It's not even anything best for him. Think about that. Think about people who are close. How many of them can you make sacrifices for? The Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. Are you going to do what's best for the Holy Spirit? A friend takes himself but first, his, his friend first before him. That's the point. Let me share this story before we pray. There's a man who was talking with a woman and whatever they asked him, who is this woman? He said, just a friend. How is this woman you are talking with? He said, just a friend. Then, the woman started changing. After two months, one day, they were talking, and the lady said that she's been on kidney donor list for some months. And the dad, the family members, they were scared to give out their own kidney. But this young guy, who is not romantically involved with this lady, because he was just a friend to this lady. Donated this guy's kidney. His kidney to this lady. After two months, they, got, they were all right. So, three times in a week, they sit down for, what do you call it? Uh, whatever, uh, something lunch, you know. Uh, get well lunch, something like that. And people were amazed. How could somebody do to you what your own family can never do to you? It's because this person cherished friendship. Friendship. A high school boy was walking down the street on his way back from school, secondary school. So he bo his books fell down on a drug. So a young man walked up to him, helped him pick it up. They exchanged pleasantries, and the young man escorted the other guy home. After three years, they kept on talking, and the boy called him and said, do you know what you did to me? He said, no. He said, you saved my life. He said, how? I was depressed and I was about to commit suicide. But that day that you walked me home, I never felt what I felt before. So 
I had another chance to leave just because I wanted, I had a friend I could talk to. Through friendship, nobody, nothing can buy it. Nothing can buy through friendship. And listen clearly. Friendship is one of those five things that we live for. We live for it. It's part of those little sentiments that make life better. Stand to your feet.